Welcome back to the Little Black Shade Tree. Today we're doing something a little different. We're making wet specimens. I started this project because I love biology and I wanted to expand my girls' science display in our library, inspired by my favorite nature store. I've always loved animals and science, so that's what this video was inspired by. I wanted to note that no animals were harmed to make this video because they were already dead. The little mouse I got because our cat had caught and killed it. The mega rat was found by my daughters in our shed, freshly dead but no idea how or why. The mole was killed by our dog but I interceded before she ate it. <laughs> Once you have your specimen, you'll need to either preserve it right away or freeze it. But once you're ready to go, the first thing you'll need is formalin. It's 10% formaldehyde and common in classroom dissections. You can purchase it on a variety of science equipment websites, even Amazon. Veterinarians even keep a supply of it. For your other supplies, make sure you have a funnel for pouring the formalin, labels in case you need to date them or keep track of the liquid your specimen is currently sitting in, a respirator, however you can get away without one if you're in a well ventilated area. Mine came from Lowe's, you'll also want some gloves and a pair of goggles which I got from the Dollar Tree. You'll also need a glass jar, it has to be glass because plastic won't hold up to the formalin. Dollar Tree has some great choices, but if you want some more variety, Hobby Lobby is the place to be. You'll also need a syringe, and I believe drugstores usually carry them. Once you have everything you need, and you have either a freshly dead animal or a thawed one, you are ready to go. Strap on your gloves and put on your respirator. It was November when I started this project, so I have a thick coat on. Pull out your little dish and fill it with formalin. It's important that this step uses only clean, fresh formalin. Lay out your specimen and pull out your needle and syringe. Fill the syringe with formalin and begin injecting in the major areas, but ensure you're not injecting air. It's most important to get lots in the abdomen and in the gut. The rest depends on how large your specimen is. Since this mouse is so small, it won't need much else, but I went ahead and got in the thighs and some other spots. This step does more than just preserve them, it actually plumps them up and makes them look more healthy and alive, and that's what you want. Make sure to inject them in several different areas in the abdomen, not just injecting them in one spot. I did the same thing with this rat, except with him I made a lot more injections and used more formalin. I then put both of them in their jars and filled with the formalin. This formalin will harden their bodies over the next couple of days, so make sure you pose them the way you want them to stay forever. To do that, you can use string to hold limbs up, or like I did here, I used a rock on his tail to weigh him down. I might have injected a little bit of air and that's why he was floating. Tighten that lid down and you are ready to let them sit. I of course washed down the jars with soap and water. Now the time needed to let them preserve in the formalin depends on the size of the specimen. For the rat, it needs to soak for at least two months, while the mouse would only need about one month. The liquid is dirty right now, but I promise it will be crystal clear when we're all done. If you noticed in the beginning, I also preserved a little octopus. I got it from a fish market, but it had already been cleaned out like they do regular fish. So I went into my first aid kit and pulled out a suturing kit. I tried sewing him back together, hoping my hack job didn't embarrass my dad, who's performed surgery for much of his career. Once I got him all stitched up, I pulled out my jar and filled it up with the formalin. Looking back, I wish I had used a smaller jar for him, but this works pretty well anyways. Once your critters have soaked for long enough, then pull out your materials again and the new items on this table are isopropyl alcohol, 70%, and distilled water. I've also got some coffee filters out here to filter used dirty formalin so I can save it for another project. Now I'm pulling out my mouse and pouring out that formalin. 
There's also a rock in there I used to hold him down, pulled out the rock. Now I'm using the distilled water to clean him and wash him. So I'm gonna fill it up once here. Give him some good shaking because you want to get him as clean as you can. See how dirty that water became almost instantly. So I'm going to take him out, rinse it out into the grass because it really is just distilled water. And I'm going to give him, I gave him two rinses with that distilled water. Now I am filling it up with the isopropyl alcohol and that is the final solution. So here's the rat and here's the first of two rinses with the distilled water. and the mole. Go ahead and pour out that formalin and set it aside. Here's his first rinse with the distilled water because we wanna get him nice and clean so the final product is crystal clear liquid. Here's the isopropyl alcohol again. The mole is all clean so he is ready to go. I love that mole. Here is the rat's second rinse. I made sure to give them some good shaking, nice gentle shakes to get any of the debris, anything out of that fur. Here's Mr. Clean Rat getting the final liquid, the isopropyl alcohol. After they were done, I went ahead and scrubbed down those jars with soap and water to make sure that they were clean. Oh, look how cute he is. He looks so fluffy. Here I'm going to go ahead and filter out my used formalin so I can save it for a different project. I don't have anything on the schedule right now, but you never know. Just try not to spill. <laughs> they are all done. Yay! Oh my goodness, I love them. Now let me show you our science section in our library. We've got everything from science equipment like test tubes and microscopes to beautiful seashells and even this tiny piece of a real meteorite. We've got our bug collection that we put in resin ourselves. We've got some moss, a Marimo moss ball, which is the bomb. And now our wet specimens. I love it. I'm so happy with how they turned out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe to the Little Black Shade Tree and I'll see you in the next video.